Hi everyone, Kate here back with another video from Lottery Post. Now if you know Lottery Post, you know we hate computerized drawings. But it's not that we hate computers and technology. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! We're not looking to knock down progress and modernization, but in the lottery, there are just some corners you can't cut. Unfortunately, there have been way too many documented incidents that have proven again and again why computerized drawings are too risky, no matter how many safety precautions and procedures are in place. Here are some reasons why we hate computerized drawings and why you might too. Lottery players overwhelmingly prefer traditional ball machine drawings because the actual drawing process can be witnessed easily by any layman, minimizing the potential for fraud. But in fairness, there are some good aspects to computerized drawings. To break it down, let's start with the basic pros and cons, supplemented by our own thoughts. The obvious reason, they're automatic and less hands-on. While it may surprise you, we'll say up front that computerized drawings do have a place in some lottery games, specifically the quick draw style games that are drawn every four to five minutes, like Kino and Raffles, do need the help of digital drawings since those games require a large quantity of drawn numbers in a short period of time, which makes real ball drawings impractical. They require fewer security checks leading up to the drawing, such as test drawings and ensuring the balls and mechanical processes are working properly. You don't have to hire a host to accompany the drawings. There have been some instances of human error, like when a South Carolina lottery human caller incorrectly called out the winning number as 620 instead of 920 in a pick three drawing. But on the flip side, that mistake was easy to rectify with visual proof of a drawing machine. And so the lottery could just easily pay out the two sets of numbers and move on. So we view this point more as an argument for saving money rather than something positive. They save the lottery money. Arkansas Lottery then-director Ernie Passaleg had said in 2009 that building a studio and purchasing equipment for live drawings would cost $1.7 million, and holding the drawings would cost $800,000 or more every year. Sounds like a lot, but considering that's a one-time price tag with an annual expense less than a million dollars, that's practically pennies for a state lottery. And it's absolutely affordable. On the other hand, he said, a random number generator would cost about $100,000 to purchase, program, and test, and would cost little to nothing to operate. He also argued that lottery drawings in a TV studio are a thing of the past, calling them a non-event and a waste of money because players have lost interest in watching them. It's a completely different view than how some other state lotteries view it, such as the Texas Lottery, who contends that people do like to see the ball machine in action as it increases the security and confidence in the games. So let's break down why computerized drawings are bad and why traditional ball drawings are good. But before we do, just a quick reminder to hit that big red subscribe button and turn notifications on if you haven't already. And please feel free to give a quick tap on the like button because it really helps out our channel and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Like how the Texas Lottery put it, real ball drawings build trust in the drawings because they are physically observable. Even if you know how computers work and can find the best argument in the world for using one, it's hard to translate that kind of trust to players who simply cannot see how the drawing is taking place. You can watch a numbered ball float up in a tube, but you can't physically see a number being spit out of a computer. Computerized drawings are also much less exciting. Those of you who play the multi-state game Lucky for Life know of the recent change the game underwent from mechanical drawings to using random number generators, or RNGs, the program at the heart of a computer drawing that generates each number drawn. Now, instead of watching the live drawing from the studio space hosted by the Connecticut Lottery, you can now watch the numbers digitally appear on a screen. Very exciting. Wow. It casts doubt over the lottery's likability and reputation considering how relatively cheap it is for a lottery to maintain a studio space. Along that same vein, it just seems lazy. There is potential for someone to manipulate the outcome, which did happen. More on that later. Computerized drawings still require the results to be verified with systems and checks for every single drawing. Considering you have to check the machines before a mechanical drawing takes place, is there really any effort being saved here? To be very honest, when you weigh and compare the reasons for using and not using computerized drawings, we get the idea of modernization and keeping up with technology and industry trends but we just don't get why it's absolutely crucial. As the saying goes, if it's not broken, and especially if the benefits aren't really that great for the cost and effort to implement, is it really worth it? Think about it this way. Will a lottery player look at a lottery switch into computerized drawings and say, wow, much better? Probably not. Because there is distrust with the lotteries to begin with, digital draws do nothing to help that. They only add fuel to the fire. 
There have been some computerized drawings that stood out in the past for stirring up suspicions of glitches or fraud, but then again, when talking about the lottery, we are dealing with the matter of pure luck and chance. In 2006, the same set of numbers were drawn in the Wisconsin Lottery's Super Cash game within 10 days. While the game was drawn with a computerized drawing machine, the odds of that happening naturally are about 1 in 326,000, or like flipping a coin and having it come up 18 times in a row, heads. It is very well possible. The same thing happened with the Nebraska Lottery in 2009, when identical pick three numbers were drawn two nights in a row in the exact same order. Another example of an improbable outcome that aroused suspicion was when sequential numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 were drawn in the South Africa Lottery's Powerball drawing. Powerball in South Africa is drawn using a random number generator in the presence of an independent auditor, but traditional ball drawings are used only in the event that the RNG is not operational. This drawing caused a huge stir, not just because of the sequence of numbers, but because there were 20 winners who split the jackpot when it's considered uncommon for more than two winners to share the jackpot. So players accused the lottery of rigging the draw to allow a specific group of people to win with an unlikely combination of numbers, while others jumped to defend the lottery, saying that the sequence had just as good of a chance of being drawn as any other. But remember, and we have to be fair here, as much as we hate computerized drawings, these instances are just that. Improbable, but not impossible. That's an idea we will always stand by, and it's something we feel is important to point out. At the same time, we think the inevitable occurrence of unlikely events is all the more reason to ditch computerized drawings. They just give more reason to distrust lotteries when those unlikely events do occur. But don't let these examples fool you. If you still believe computerized drawings are 100% foolproof and safe, they're not. The reality is, there's always room for human error in an automated process. There are plenty of instances in where glitches and programming issues ruined a computerized drawing for millions of lottery tickets. Let's take the Tennessee Lottery as an example. In 2007, they switched over to using computerized drawings. The security and integrity of our games is of utmost importance, a Tennessee Lottery spokesperson said. There's no reason to doubt these drawings or question the integrity of how we do the drawings. Two weeks later. Just a couple weeks after responding to player complaints about abandoning mechanical drawings, a problem with the programming in the drawing software was discovered to have soiled 82 lottery drawings and made it so millions of sold tickets had no chance of winning at all. This is the real kicker though. It wasn't the lottery who found the problem. It was the lottery players who caught on after noticing that there were zero combinations containing duplicate numbers getting drawn for days. But wait, there's more. But I'm not done yet! Even after multiple disgruntled players bombarded the lottery with messages and phone calls to look into it, the lottery came out and said that testing showed no problems and that duplicate numbers were just showing up fine in some random test draws. However, there was a problem. In fact, it was just because of one teeny tiny letter. The glitch was caused by a key punch error by an employee of SmartPlay International, the company that makes the random number generating software, who typed U for unique instead of an R for repeat in the computer code. That one single little letter that one person failed to catch affected millions of tickets across 82, Cash 3, Cash 4, and Lotto 5 drawings. Bruh. One month later, there was apparently another flaw that the lottery had to pay out two sets of winning numbers for, but the lottery spokespeople must have been getting so tired of the mistakes too that they didn't even attempt to explain what caused the error this time. Another glitch occurred in 2013 when the Arizona Lottery's programming code in Pick 3 prevented the numbers 8 and 9 from being drawn in certain positions. This error resulted in about 92% of tickets purchased having a better chance to win, and caused about 8% of tickets to have no chance of winning. So, from a trust perspective, the scariest part is that because the lottery could not actually see the drawings taking place like they can with traditional ball drawings, nobody at the lottery had a clue that there was a problem for two whole months. Again, it was only when players started complaining that the lottery looked into the issue. In 2017, the Arizona Lottery had another problem, where their RNG machine spit out the same winning numbers for six days across four different draw games. Did you lose the lottery lately? Well, you might actually be eligible for a refund because of a computer glitch Arizona Lottery officials completely missed. But for example, in a Fantasy V drawing on September 29th, 2017, the numbers drawn were 1, 4, 8, 12, and 28. The same numbers were generated by the machine when it was used again in the game on October 3rd. Duplicate numbers were also generated in All or Nothing on September 28th and 30th, and then again on September 29th and October 3rd. 
they pulled two RNG machines and, wait for it, temporarily switched to real ball drawings while they prepared the new computerized drawing machines. What? I guess they could have just used them from the start? But what was actually wrong with the draw machines? An investigation found that the machine initially taken out of service was physically broken. The way RNG computers work is that they rely on a physical device that measures the decay of radioactive material in order to create a random seed value from which the winning numbers are generated. That physical device overheated and broke, causing the seed value to always be a zero value. Compounding the problem was the fact that the computer's program code did not check to be sure a valid seed value was used to generate the winning numbers. It just accepted the value of zero every time and proceeded to generate the winning numbers from it. Because the seed value was always zero, the winning numbers generated were always the same. The second backup computerized drawing machine taken out of service was found to be operating properly, and although the machine generated the same pick three winning numbers three times within a few weeks, the report deemed it a statistical anomaly and repeated numbers were in fact apparently valid results. But then again, from the lottery player's perspective, you will never know for sure if that actually is the case if you cannot see the drawing taking place. There are so many examples of the same problem happening over and over. There's the time when the New Mexico pick four drawings were incorrectly programmed to prevent combinations with repeat digits from being drawn. And the same thing happened with California's Daily Derby game in 2005 where the problem denied 650 players a chance to win the game's grand prize over six months. Most recently, just in 2021, New Jersey suspended fast play sales after a software error prevented the gaming system from selecting a jackpot winner. The case of drawing identical numbers also came up with the Kansas Lottery. How about in 2015, when a glitch in Delaware allowed the same winning numbers to be drawn for six Kino games? At least some players took advantage of that one. When one smart player realized the machine was spitting out the same numbers over and over, other customers in the same store started buying up the tickets. While some players won out, there were two other players who sued the lottery for $2 million over disputed Kino tickets, saying that they bought winning tickets with the combination that came out during the glitch. But the lottery denied them the winnings, arguing that they were a result of a computer malfunction that resulted in five tickets being generated with the same numbers. Like we mentioned earlier, since Kino is a fast-paced game, the lottery does use computerized drawings to generate the winning numbers. But it's a reminder that no matter how well computers can be programmed to generate random numbers, there's still a degree of unreliability involved. Delaware lawmakers did draft a bill to end computerized drawings and conduct lottery drawings live, but it didn't pass. The last mistake we'll bring up is when the Connecticut lottery was forced to hold the second New Year's raffle draw when a lottery employee entered an incorrect range of ticket numbers into a smart play origin random number generator. Connecticut Lottery hoping to hold a redo of that flawed super draw game next week. The two other observers, whose job it was to make sure the correct information was being entered correctly, missed the mistake too, and the blunder caused 100,000 eligible tickets to be excluded from the game. Again, we mentioned earlier that a raffle is a type of game that might need the help of a computer to draw from a large pool of numbers, but we are including this example here just to highlight that there is room for human error in a digital draw process. All of these documented examples of glitches and errors and computerized drawings will be in the description below for you to read up on so you don't miss a single detail. And even though the glitches and scams might be uncovered, in the end, there are players who will inevitably lose out even after the lottery provides a solution. The truth is, when there's a glitch or error that affects the legitimacy of a draw, it's an arduous task to ensure that the restitution for affected players is fair. Lotteries offer reimbursement for affected tickets, but when a problem is discovered weeks or months down the road, it's a bit unfair to expect players not to throw out their losing tickets. These are all just glitches, in other words, human error, implying that these were mistakes that no one really meant to make. But what happens when someone in charge of the drawing means to do harm? Are these computerized drawings hackable? Yes. Has it happened before? Well, yes. And it was the biggest scandal in lottery history. We did an entire video on how lottery rigging mastermind Eddie Tipton exploited computerized drawings to hack drawings in multiple states so he and his associates could win millions of dollars, only it didn't turn out as he had hoped. This entire story deserved a video on its own, so check out that video in the description below. But without going into too much detail, 
Eddie Tipton was able to hack the RNG software to produce numbers that he could easily predict on certain dates of the year. At this point, if you still don't believe computerized drawings are bad, absolutely check out that story. But despite all of this, lotteries are gradually adopting computerized drawings for the sake of ease and simply because it keeps a little more revenue in their pockets. Take Lucky for Life as an example. And although it seems unavoidable considering how society will inevitably become more streamlined and modern with time, there are some state lotteries holding steadfast to maintain fair and traditional drawings. If this is something you're passionate about, you can call and write to your state legislation to make sure your voice is heard. It's an issue that Lottery Post has always maintained a hard stance on. In 2011, we published an online petition to encourage government lotteries to change draw procedures from using computer-generated numbers to using mechanical drawing devices based on security concerns, which continues to garner more signatures to this day. If you want to view the petition or add your name, you can check that link. I'll put that down in the description below. You might have sat through this entire video with a very important question in your mind, and that might be, can't physical ball drawings be manipulated too? There is one infamous ball drawing that occurred in Pennsylvania in 1980, over 40 years ago, known as the Triple Six Fix, in which lottery personnel rigged a drawing by weighting some of the balls to produce a combination of specific digits. Good evening, everyone. It's time for the live drawing of the daily number, Thursday, April 24th, 1980. Six. Six, and now the third digit. Six, and there you have it, today's Pennsylvania Lottery Daily number, that's six, six, six. It was successful, but because of the betting patterns and the nature of the draw, it didn't take months to uncover like in some of the other glitched computerized drawings. People who support RNGs like to keep resurfacing that incident because any type of drawing can be rigged, but that red herring actually illustrates historically just how safe real ball drawings have been and also how problems with real ball drawings are relatively easy to catch. So far on our channel, we've covered a lot to do with computerized drawings in this video and in our Eddie Tipton video, but we have yet to talk more in depth about how real lottery ball drawings work, including procedures, preparation, auditing, broadcasting, and more. So stay tuned for a video on that later. But we're interested to hear your thoughts on the topic. What do you think about computerized drawings? Do you hate them as much as we do? Technology! Computer! Let us know in the comments down below whether you feel just as strongly about them as we do, or maybe not. Don't forget to also hit that big red subscribe button and turn notifications on if you haven't already, so you are ready for when our next video comes out. Feel free to also tap that like button because it lets us know that you like what you saw, and it helps us tailor our future videos to fit what you are interested in. Plus, it really helps out the channel and we tremendously appreciate it. Otherwise, we hope you enjoyed, and from all of us at Lottery Post, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.